Trucker Dump for November 25th, 2010, episode 58. How much is too much? Welcome to Trucker Dump, where you'll get one driver's insights and sometimes humorous views of truck driving and the trucking industry, and pretty much anything else he feels like dumping on you. This podcast is brought to you by AboutTruckDriving.com. Resources to help you understand the world of truck driving through the use of stories and a pathetic attempt at humor. Howdy doody, folks. Todd McCann here. I did something a bit different with the blog and the podcast this week. Let me know what you think after you hear, How much is too much? I'm fixing to kill two birds with one stone. (laughs) As if I could even hit one bird with a stone, let alone two. Heck, I once missed a squirrel from 20 feet with a 12-grade shotgun. Seriously, I've got no hope with a frickin' stone. Anywho, for those of you who don't know, the carrier I drive for has made a lot of changes to company policy lately. I've been rather vocal about these changes, both online and off. This prompted me to write a letter to the head of our safety department. Not an email, an actual letter with a stamp and everything. Perhaps I should address it with giant block letters. That way it'll for sure get noticed. Nah, I don't want to have the hazmat folks evacuating the building. I've decided to post this letter on the blog because it speaks to a subject that every driver has to face. What exactly are you willing to give up in order to get something else? Maybe it's a nicer truck or the opportunity to be home more often. In my case, it's higher pay that causes me to make sacrifices. But where do you draw the line? How much is too much? Also, this letter will show you hot-headed drivers how to write a respectful letter to an employer, a government official, or a retailer who has given you bad service. Not that I'm an expert on the subject, but I know that some of you psychotic drivers out there think everything can be solved by cramming your fist down someone's esophagus. While that's a temptation we all want to give in to, a little respect goes a long way. So here goes. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Also, the company name, the address, and the pay rates. And before anyone asks, I'll say it again. I do not reveal the name of my company. This is to ensure that my butt keeps its job. So here we go. November 24th, 2010. Mr. Q.B. Call. Turtle Trucking. 10-4 Drive, Freightville, Hawaii. Dear Mr. Call, I trust that I have sent this to the appropriate party. If not, please pass it on to the correct individual or department. In light of some of Turtle Trucking's recent decisions, and some older ones, I felt the need to voice my opinion. According to many of the other company drivers that I've spoken with, I'm positive that I'm not the only one who's concerned. We all know that Turtle Trucking charges its customers a premium price for excellent service. According to the company line, none of this is possible without top-of-the-line drivers. I fear that these policies are going to start affecting the quality of drivers that are attracted to Turtle Trucking. I don't actively recruit drivers, but I have plenty of them ask me about the company. The first thing they ask is if the three cents per mile is true. I have to tell them that the pay rate was before the bad economy hit, and that it's now two cents. Still, I assure them that the money and the miles are there to be had. Next, they ask me how I like the company. I tell them that the company is efficient and the money is great, but that they all have to make some sacrifices for it. The first thing I mention is that no inverters are allowed in the truck. They always ask about the cigarette lighter kind, to which I say no. Nine times out of ten, they walk away. If that didn't scare them off, they usually say, That's okay, I got one of those cooking devices that plugs into a cigarette lighter. Now I have to tell them that they can't have those either. I'd be willing to bet that they'll walk off too. Every turtle trucking driver I've spoken with is livid about this new rule. Drivers only have a few things that make their life on the road bearable. A paycheck on Friday, a hot shower, and a hot meal. Turtle trucking pays more than most carriers, but now if I want a hot meal, I have to spend that hard-earned money to eat in restaurants. If the health and efficiency of the driver is truly a concern for turtle trucking, this can't be a good thing. Not to mention, hot meals cooked in the truck are 2 to $3, and the cheapest you can walk out of a truck stop is $10. I spoke with a couple of 10-plus year turtle trucking drivers and some maintenance personnel about the inverter issue. It seems that they were banned after a couple of drivers misused their inverters, which caused their trucks to catch fire. I can only assume that some drivers recently showed poor judgment using their cooking devices, too. 
It's disturbing to me that a few drivers with poor judgment can affect company policy so much. If a driver is found to be an unsafe driver, you don't put the truck out of commission. You get rid of the driver responsible for the behavior. Why punish all the drivers who still use common sense? Clearly, these devices couldn't be sold if they were unsafe to operate. It's the idiotic driver who's at fault. Next up, idling. While I personally think the new idling policy is fair, I've had many a driver walk away when I mention it. Most say it wouldn't be an issue if we had APUs, that's auxiliary power units, but as you well know, Total Trucking hasn't decided that they're cost-effective yet. E-logs are another matter. I know every carrier will eventually convert to e-logs, but I also know from talking to drivers that most want to avoid them as long as possible. Therefore, many won't even consider Turtle Trucking. Despite what the company posters say, all the Turtle Trucking drivers that I've spoken with don't like them. At worst, one company driver was going to retire early because of them. At best, the remaining drivers say that they don't like them, but that they are tolerable. Lastly is the fact that you have to turn your truck in if you're going to be out of it for more than three days. I know it used to be four days. One of those 10 plus year Turtle Trucking veterans said that it was five days a while back. While this rule won't affect drivers who live near a yard, it will certainly affect those of us who don't. In order to keep my truck, I used to be okay with the idea of taking only four days vacation instead of five. Now if I want a week's vacation, I'll have to drop my truck at the Honolulu yard and drive home seven and a half hours. When I'm ready to come back, it's another seven and a half hours. That's one full day of my vacation wasted driving to and from a yard. I understand that you need to utilize your trucks, but how can you expect to keep drivers long term if they can't make their vacation time worth their while? To sum up, I and every other turtle trucking driver I've spoken with know that we make sacrifices for the higher pay that turtle trucking offers. The question is this, in an industry where many carriers are striving to provide better conditions for drivers, how will turtle trucking fare when it comes to hiring and retaining quality drivers in the future? And how long before the extra pay isn't worth it? Sincerely, Christopher T. McCann. Okay, now don't be laughing at that first name. Don't force me to cram a fist down your esophagus. Now I know what some of you are thinking, and you're probably right. I don't expect this letter to change any of our company policies. But hey, you never know. The engine with the low dipstick gets the oil. And since I'm so slick... Uh, wait, or am I the dipstick? Ah, shut up and eat your turkey. Turkey. Well, there wasn't really any feedback on the dispatcher show, so nothing to report. So how'd I do on this letter? Didn't think I could be that civil, did you? So tell us why you're out here and what you're sacrificing for. Or tell us what we could do better when complaining about something. Just type turtle trucking into the search bar at abouttruckdriving.com, find the post, and leave your thoughts. You can also send me an email or tweet your thoughts, criticisms, or suggestions for future posts. That email address is truckerdump at gmail.com, and I'm Todd McCann on Twitter. That's two D's, two C's, and two N's. And lastly, if you get a chance, I'd appreciate it if you'd run by iTunes and leave a review of the show. Thanks. So until next time, drive safe and stay out of my way.